musicians in bars getting beer. Elton Ron, how you doing today? Good, I'm doing great. Tell us your real name. My real name is Ron Camilleri. Cam Ron Camilleri. Hey, is there uh, another Camilleri in the in the music? Yeah, business? my my brother and I both worked at Sony Music for years. Oh yeah. Rick was the president, and I was director of Columbia Records. Oh, are you? Yeah, and, oh, okay. and, and towards uh, where were we? 90s, 2000, back when there was a real big industry. Not so much anymore. So what do you, what do you want to talk about most today? Well, I mean, we're here as Elton Ron. I mean, that that that's kind of what we're we're, we're we're spending a lot of our time on. Um, my background's been music my whole life. I've uh, I write music for television, uh, specifically for out there with Melissa DeMarco, seen at City TV here in Toronto, and check your local listings across the country. She's um, great. Yeah, Melissa's great. Hi, I've been Melissa. writing with her for I've been working with her for 12 years. We're in our 10th season. Oh, great. So that's that's my sort of my my main thing I, is I write for television and, and film mm. and uh, corporate things. And then we all got together as musicians. Everyone in the band is an original uh, original music writer. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have albums. I just released a new album, and everybody in the band's got one out. And we got together and we started playing uh, the Selton thing, and it's sort of taken off. So we're enjoying playing festivals in um, both Canada and the United States. We've been traveling all over. Uh, everywhere we go, we just we have so much fun playing Elton. Everybody loves it because Elton's universally loved by everyone. Absolutely. So it's just it's just been a, like a real pleasure to get out and, and just do something a little bit different. We do original music, or at least I do original music all day. So when I get out at night, it's fun for me. I'm the opposite of most people. They want to go out and pitch their original stuff. I'm original all day, so I like to go out at night and pretend I'm Elton. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's sort of what we do. And so you do the whole get up and everything. Yeah, yeah. I'll be Full in some sequence in a couple minutes. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, how long have you been doing this? We've been doing it about seven years now, I think. Um, yeah, yeah it, it started just as a kind of like a fluke. One day my brother called me up. He used to run Ken West Global when he left Sony. And he just said, you know what, let's get some guys together like when we were kids and let's just, you know, go to a local bar and play. So I'm a guitarist by trade. Uh, people don't know that, but I started off on the guitar. I've been playing guitar my whole life. So we're playing Beatles and Oasis and all that kind of stuff in the bar. And... Um, the bar owner asked us back the next week, and when we came back, someone came in and put a keyboard in to jam with us. And I sat at the keyboard and I sang Rocket Man, and the place sort of went crazy. <laughs> so later on in the set, the guy yelled out, just do another Elton John song. So I did, and they went crazy again. And my brother came up with the idea. He goes, well, why don't we just do a whole Elton John set? Sounds great. So when we got invited back, we did a whole Elton John set, and it sort of grew from there. And next thing you know, we got invited to play Sound of Music Festival. That was one of the big festivals. We, we one of our first Burlington. gigs, yeah, in mm -hmm. Burlington. And then we we did the Algonquin Theater in Huntsville, and our nice. very first theater we ever played, we sold it out. So Great. we said, hey, maybe there's something here. Definitely. So I went out and got so. sequins, and <laughs> we did the whole thing. And then we changed. We we started as Ronnie and the Jets, but now we're oh, okay. Elton Ron. Oh, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So it's <laughs> it's just kind of been growing year after year. So this is our seventh year, and uh, this is our busiest year to date. And next year already. We have so many dates in the books that will will be busier next year than this. How many dates are you doing this year? I think we're doing about 30 to 40 dates this year, right, yeah. which is a lot more than what we, I mean, when we first started, we say, hey, we'll do one every couple of, you know, maybe one a month, two a month, mm -hmm. to 12, maybe 20 gigs. But we're doing 30 to 40. That's a lot for us. Most of it's in the summer. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we don't, we, we didn't really get into this to play, like, the, like gigging, like sure. going on and doing the tour thing. Well, one, one every couple of weeks is good for us, but... It looks like we're going to be doing over 40, maybe 40 to 50 dates next year, so cool. it's, it's getting busy. Any anecdotes with this particular liner? Oh, there's just, I mean, everybody in the band is so much fun to be around, and, and everybody's got their own thing that they do. They're musically so talented, and they're always branching off and playing different projects. Lester McLean's got his own thing. Laurie Ingalls is always playing every night of the week with all kinds of people, and these guys have played with, their, with everybody. We've had really funny stories on the road. I mean, we, we met the real Elton John band when we played Vegas. We, we did the Elton John convention. And they, they, they sort of took, it. yeah, they sort of took a look at us. And the, Davey Johnson sees me across the room and he waves me over. And he puts his arm around me. He said, he goes, we watch your videos backstage at Dead Caesars. And, it, and he was telling us how, how good he thinks we are. So they're fans of ours. It, it just, it's nice to hear that from somebody in the Elton band that, that they actually think what we're doing is pretty good. Kind of tells us that we're doing okay. Doing okay. Yeah, for sure. we're doing your, right. Your voice is a natural for this. It's amazing that you didn't know right off the bat when you started music. Um... I think I've always, when I grew up, I always used to listen to records. That was my thing. So when I was a guitarist, I used to listen to Chicago and Terry Kath, and I could never oh, play great. as good as Terry Kath. But uh, when my father brought home Honky Chateau, and I listened to Elton for the first time, I realized he was in my range. So I started singing a lot, and it really helped me learn how to sing. Between Elton John and Billy Joel and a few of those other artists, they kind of got me going, and I really got more into their music, and then I eventually bought myself a piano, and I just taught myself how to play Elton and Billy. And that's, that, that's how it sort of started. So I've always known I've, I sound like Elton, and I don't do any other tribute other than Elton. 
because my philosophy is you do one, you do it well, you're good. Sure. You start doing five or six different tributes and they're not quite as good, then then it starts to become more of a real gig for me. So That's this is point. this is just really fun and we do it we do it pretty well. So I think I'm just gonna stop with just doing the one yeah, and that's enjoy it. Awesome. Um, you mentioned a couple of musical influences. Do you want to go down that river? Yeah, I mean, my dad worked at CBS Records when I was a kid, so ever since I was a, a little boy, um, I can remember being around artists. Uh, my dad would bring home to the house Johnny Cash or, or Bob, Bobby Vinton. I remember singing Mr. Lonely to Bobby Vinton when he sat on the couch in my house. Oh my goodness. But the, but the thing about it was, when I was a little kid, I didn't know who all these guys were. I knew that somehow they had something to do with dad at work and they had records out, but I never really saw them as celebrity or anything. They were just friends of my dad. And then we'd go to the CNE and we'd see them like fill the grandstand and, and play. So that was always really fun. But musically, I always loved the guitarists. So um, I got to meet all kinds of guitarists as a, you know, a teen. I got to meet Jeff Beck and I got to meet Carlos wow. Santana. And, um, but to me, Terry Kath was, was my idol on guitar. Right? Yeah, I got to meet him a few times and uh, I'll, I'll give you a funny story. He was. Um, Peter Frampton was big at the time with uh, with his Frampton Comes Alive, and Talkbox was the, was the big yes. thing for all the guitars. So I wanted a Talkbox, and my parents <laughs> weren't sure they should get one. So we went to one of the Chicago shows, and we're backstage, and my mother goes right up to Terry, because Terry always used to come over and we'd talk guitars all the time. He'd always ask me if I was practicing. And my mother said, Terry, Ron wants a Talkbox. And Terry turns to my mom and, and looks at her and looks at me and says, well, will you practice more? I said, I'll practice every day. And he turns to my mom and says, well, then I guess you better get him a talk box. Oh, that's a great story. So story. the next day they bought me a talk box. <laughs> I have Terry, Terry Kath to thank for that. And the following year I never got a chance to thank him because that's when he left us. But um, oh, he, nice. was, he was a huge influence and he was one of those guys. you got to remember when you're like 13 years old and you're going to concerts with your dad, you basically you stand against the back wall and you kind of get out of everybody's way. Well, a lot of the artists used to make us feel really cool to be there. So people like... You know Terry and, and Peter Cetera. They would call, you know, wave us over, Danny Seraphin, and they talk to us and make us feel like we were really welcome. So Chicago were always one of our favorites. Every year we'd go to the uh, to the X and see them play at the grandstand. But all, all the artists, because they liked my dad so much, um, because we're family, they considered us an extension of my dad. Oh sure. So it was it was just great. The artists treated us really cool. And it was everybody from the 60s. I mean, from the from the really big artists, we got to end, ended up with the Springsteens and the Billy Joels of the world. But it started off with, you know, um, just the local Canadian artists were, were fabulous. Kelly J. Crowbar, we used to go to his farm and oh, every Christmas for a party. Amazing. And yeah, Kelly J. Um, Len Solomon now does some string shows for us. He, he and his quartet. When Miles and Lenny were on CBS, my dad was their promo rep, and that's when they won the Juno for Best New Artist. So it kind of comes full circle. Now I wow. get to, I, I played a show a couple years back when Crowbar were on the bill, and Kelly J and I were laughing. That I remember when I was really young, oh, riding his goodness. wagons at his house, and now I'm playing on the bill with him. So yeah, it was, it was great. Um, all, all those Canadian bands were so much fun to be around. And that was when the industry was really kind of taken off in Canada, hmm. back in the 70s. They were the best days. What do you think of the industry now? Well, there isn't really too much of an industry the way that, that, that we would know it. I mean, I, I think it's still there. It's just totally different. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a record company, I'm not sure what record companies can actually, it, they can't do it certainly the way we used to do it. Mm -hmm. um, we had glory years. Where, I mean, when we were working Celine and then we signed Amanda Marshall and Chantel Krivyazak and Our Lady Peace, it was a, it was a machine. Um, Tom Wilson and Junkhouse, all those guys, they, they worked really hard and we had multi-platinum and diamond records and now I'm not sure what the Canadian companies can do. I mean, they don't obviously they don't have the money that, that we used to have. We'd be making so much money that you know there was tens of millions of dollars coming in weekly with all the record sales we had. So I don't, I don't know exactly how they handle it these days. I'm sure it's a different formula. I'm sure they do different things. I know the staffs are smaller. Um, are they signing the same amount of artists? I don't know. I don't think so. But um, to tell you the truth, when I left the industry, I kind of left it. Mm -hmm. I, other than okay. getting into writing and doing original stuff, I don't really talk to the industry all that much. I right. don't know much about what they're doing. I, I, I'm really happy for the, the artists that seem to be making it. And they're making it now internationally as mm -hmm. much as they're making it in, in Canada. So obviously something's working. I just think the way they do it is a little different, I think, with the Internet and yes. YouTube. And it's just a, it's a whole different game now. Do you think it's more open for indie? Yeah, yeah. I tell artists all the time. I don't think you need a record company anymore. I mean, in essence, a record company was a bank for years. Yeah. I mean, we'd loan all the money to the artists, they'd go out there and then we'd try to make it back. And we'd try to make profit off them and, and, and hopefully they made a lot of money along the way. But these days, I mean, I see some bands that come along and they make, a, they make themselves a YouTube video around a great song. They get a following. They're, 
that's how it starts to take off. Whereas in the old days, we would sign an act for like three or four albums and develop them and send them out on the road for two years. That doesn't happen anymore. No. Now you write a good song and you can do a quirky little YouTube video, you can make yourself a lot of money. Right. That's the way to do it, kids. That's the way. <laughs> do your own stuff. It's got to be a great song. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, uh, it's always been that. Yeah. And in the history of the music industry, I mean, occasionally you get some that, that kind of go through the cracks that aren't so great that make a lot of money. But generally, the better songs usually float to the top and usually, great... usually get to the top. That's so if you can write a good song, you you know, it's all in the way you get it out there. Sure is. So... It's, it's good. I mean, it's, it's healthy. I just I, lo I love the young kids coming. I get a lot of people. I have a recording studio in my house, so I bring a lot of the kids in and I listen to their songs, and they're great. The kids are. That's that's, cool. that's tomorrow's talent. That's what it's all about. Yeah. So how do we find you online? Um, you can find me a couple ways. Elton Ron. Uh, Elton Ron. It's Elton John, basically with an R instead of a J, in case right. you haven't figured it out. Uh, Eltonron.com is our band website, and my recording studio is rdcmusic.ca. Um, that's where I record all, everything for the show, and I just released an album, so you can come listen to it there. Tell me what you think, and um, that's probably the best way of getting, getting a hold of me, either that or get a hold of me through Laurie Ingalls or, or Sammy B or Lester McLean, all the guys that, that I play with. They all know how to call me. They call me a lot. <laughs> Anybody else you want to mention that you've, uh, you know, thank for the uh, Grammy that you're going to win? Uh, oh, Grammy? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, see, here's the thing. The reason I did the record was... Every time we go out and we play, everybody asks, do we have anything that we, they can listen to? Sure. And I tell everyone that everyone in the band's an original music artist, so I thought, you know, I, I, I'm going to do a record, and I did it differently than, than I probably would have done a normal album. I wanted to make it sound like the 70s back when Elton was in his heyday, so we, we purposely produced it, mixed it, and mastered it. And with all the trains coming by? Yeah. So I got Adam Fair up at Villa Sound. Uh, Tim Thornton's a good friend of mine, and I met Adam through Tim. Uh, Adam and I got together and we mixed it like it was out of the 70s and then we mastered it so it sounds like something would be Yellow Brick Roadish kind of a time and um, I wanted to write songs that were very Elton and feel and sure. sounding. Um, I'll, I'll admit they're not as good as Elton but, it, but I never expected to be as good as Elton but um, I think they're pretty good and, and a lot of people seem to they hear the Elton influence when I recorded it so we did it on purpose and then everyone's got records. Lester McLean's got his own record, Laura Ingalls is doing his, his recordings, Ma Matthew Maron's got his record so everybody in the band, if you come to the Elton Ron site, they'll be, you'll see all the members in the band. I can hook you up with all of them. They all have great original music. And I think that's one of the reasons why when we get together, we have so much fun. is because we get to throw all that aside and just go out and be Elton John band for, for a night. Just, right. We have a blast. That's awesome. It's good. Thanks for being on oh, Musicians hey. in Bars. Yeah, thank you. Elton Ron. It's been a great time. Cheers.